Morning, SIBIC Suramban. It's a privilege to be able to share with you uh, this morning and I want to uh, thank Pastor Tim for giving me the privilege to bring the Word of God to the congregation this morning and I pray that the Word of God will speak to you and um, uh, really be a blessing in your life, especially in the year 2021. I don't know whether you realize that we are living in a time and season where people are very disrespectful. There is no longer this value or culture of honor. Uh, it's really sad that it's impacting even Asians. We Asians from young are taught to honor. You know, I grew up in a culture, in a home where I am taught to honor. Uh, I never once saw my father and mother uh, being disrespectful uh, to people uh, uh, who are older than them, uh, to other cultures. My, my father has never talked bad about other cultures uh, uh, and uh, they don't look down on other religions. Uh, they always taught us and remember, they taught all this even before they came to know the Lord even before they became Christians, they were already teaching us, the four sons that they had, how to honor, how to respect. I want to start today's message. I've entitled this morning's message as Culture of Honor. Okay? Culture of Honor. Um, I want to start by giving you an illustration. My wife teaches in a, uh, a school, uh, a private school, and uh, she overheard a group of uh, uh, 10-year-olds uh, talking uh, to one another and the topic was politics, 10-year-olds talking about politics. You know, I, I don't know whether you talked about politics when you were 10. I was not talking about politics when I was 10. But these 10-year-olds were talking about uh, the former Prime Minister, uh, uh, Dr. Mahathir, and they mentioned something like this, uh, I know this old man uh, cannot die one uh, and he give problem to everybody. And my wife was very shocked. So she said, uh, who, where did you hear this from? And they told uh, my wife, uh, teacher, uh, we heard it from our parents. And uh, so uh, what am I trying to bring across? This culture of honor uh, cannot be taught by others. It has to be taught by family and especially parents. Parents, be aware what you are passing down. Are you passing down a culture of honor or are you passing down a culture of dishonor? Are we practicing and saying one thing at home and doing another thing in church. And so this is something that I really want you to ask yourself this question. The Word of God must bring transformation. It's not just to entertain, but it has to impact our heart and bring about transformation. Only then we will slowly become more and more like Christ. And so with that, I want to look at today's passage the three passages that we're going to look at, and I'm going to bring out three particular points uh, from those uh, passages. I want you to realize uh, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul said this, that uh, people uh, in the last days will be lovers of themselves. Okay? It lovers of themselves. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, when he's saying this, uh, Paul is referring not to the non-believers, but to Christians. That Christians themselves, okay? In that chapter, verse 5, it talks about having a form of godliness, but lacking the power of it. Referring to Christians who are lovers of themselves, boastful, you know, uh, prideful, lovers of pleasure. So he gives a whole list. But one of the things is lovers of themselves. In other words, they do have no regard for anybody else 
or any culture or any religion or any race. That's why we become racist. I say this again. That's why we become racist. Because we think too highly of our own selves and look down on others. And so parents, it's so important for us to understand that all the more as we enter into the last days that people are becoming more and more disrespectful and dishonoring one another. Uh, I always say this, where there is no honor, there is no worship. God is not going to show up into a place where there is no honor for Him. You know, uh, let's ask ourselves, uh, what is our attitude of coming to church? You know, before COVID, uh, even in my own church, uh, we have changed our service time so many times in, to accommodate people. No matter how many times we change our service time, they still come late. They can never come on time for worship. Some people only enter church when the message is being preached because they don't like to sing, so they like to skip the worship part. And so that shows uh, that there's a lot of disrespect for God and for His presence. If we truly believe when we gather God is there and we act like that, that is disrespectful. If you go to someone's house and they say to you, Oh, you again. Why you come again? Would you ever go to that house again? But that's how sometimes we behave in church by our attitude and our actions. No wonder in some churches the atmosphere is so cold because God is not there because He is not welcome. He is not welcome. But I pray today, SIB Oasis, that you will listen carefully and that you will take the word of God to your heart. Because where there is no honor, there is no worship. Jesus uh, even said in Mark chapter 7, verse 6 and 7, He says, He answered and said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? As it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of man. So Jesus was saying, These people, Isaiah spoke about them. Their heart and their lips do not coordinate. They worship God with the lips, but the heart is far away. And in a culture where there is a lot of dishonor, does this same prophecy that Isaiah spoke 3,000 years ago apply to us? That our lips worship God, but our heart is far away because there is no honor for God? I pray in 2021, this will change in our churches. This has to change if we truly want to see the touch of God and the revival of God in our churches. And so, what are the three things that I want to talk about in becoming, uh, in having a culture of honor? So first thing is, you, if you can turn with me to Matthew chapter 13, verse 53 to 58, this is what he says. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables, that he departed from there. When he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and this mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brothers James, Joseph, and Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did he, this man get all these things? So they were offended. Listen very carefully. They were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. 
Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Church, now do you know why I say things need to change in order to have revival? To, uh, in order to see the mighty works of God in our church, in our life, we got to have honor for Him. The church needs to show honor. Leadership needs to really emphasize on honoring God because He's a holy God. So the first thing I want to bring across in culture of honor is this. Honor leads to belief. Dishonor leads to unbelief. Okay? You, you got to understand this. You know, in having a culture of honor in your church, if you honor God and His word, His servants, it will create belief. There will be an atmosphere of belief in the church, in the congregation. People will be united in belief. But when there is dishonor and a culture of dishonor in your church, it will lead to unbelief. Because that's what we see in this passage. The people in Nazareth dishonored Jesus by their commands. Huh? Remember how, what they said, is this not the carpenter's son? Is, the, is not the mother and Mary? Uh, are the brothers not these guys? The sisters, are they not with us? Then where did he get all this wisdom? Is from Nazareth. In another passage, someone said, you know, what good can come out of Nazareth? <laughs> Are you from a place where nothing good comes out? Listen, that's where Jesus came from as well. And he, oh boy, did he change history. But nothing could happen in Nazareth because there was such dishonor for Jesus in his own town. You know, sometimes uh, in churches, uh, pastor may preach the same message and suddenly an international speaker comes and preaches the same message. People will say, oh, what a powerful message. That is from God. This, this is how our pastor should learn to preach. But the pastor has already preached the same message. We tend to honor someone from outside more than our very own. You want to see things happen in your church? Be very careful with your commands. Why? The commands of the people influence the whole city of Nazareth. You must remember, it was only the folks in the synagogue that were very dishonoring. But their commands stopped Jesus from doing anything in the whole city. There are so many other people who may have needs, but their needs were never met. Because of few people with negative comments. Their comments lead to unbelief and hindered the whole city from experiencing great miracles. And if you realize, the passage says even Jesus cannot perform any mighty works there. Why? Because of dishonor. And dishonor leads to unbelief. And when there is unbelief, no miracles can happen. What a lethal combination. Dishonor, unbelief. So, dear friends, listen very carefully. Learn to honor God's people in your own place. And God will do mighty things in your church this year. Don't say, oh, I know this pastor. I've seen him since he was a kid. I've seen him grow up. Oh, he was a naughty boy. You know, come on. This was exactly what was being uh, said and done in Nazareth. And we still never learned the lesson. I wonder what Bible we are reading. And so, I pray that things will change in your church. Transformation will start happening and honor will come. The culture of honor will come. And if parents honor, children will learn how to honor. If parents don't greet, children won't get, greet. If parents don't know how to say thank you, children won't say thank you. If parents are always making negative comments about other ways, your children are going to be racist. 
So be careful with your commands. It will lead to either belief or unbelief. Dishonor brings unbelief. Honor brings belief. The second thing, the second thing that I want to bring across is this. This is taken from the story of Noah in Genesis chapter 9, verse 20 to 27. And this is what it says. And Noah began to be a farmer and he planted a vineyard. This is after the flood when they have settled. Okay. And this is what happened. He planted a vineyard. Of all things, he planted a vineyard. Then he drank of the wine and he was drunk. Okay. So next time when you want to plant something, Vineyard is not a good idea. Okay, go for tomatoes. It's good for health. And became uncovered in his tent. Okay, he was drunk and he was naked. And Ham, the father of Canaan. Now you remember this place called Canaan. Eh? The father of Canaan saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Shem, see, eh? but Shem and Jephthah took a garment, laid it on both of uh, their shoulders, and went backward, okay? They went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. Okay? Then he said, Listen carefully, eh? cursed be Canaan. He didn't say cursed be Ham. He said cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants he shall be to his brethren. And he said blessed be the Lord, the God of Sham. And may Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth. And may he dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. So, in the family of Noah, there is also some issue of honor. Okay? This son of Noah, Ham, sees his father naked, doesn't do anything to cover his nakedness, comes out and makes a joke out of it. Okay? He again commend talked about the father's nakedness. And so what happens? The other two sons, Sham and Japheth, took a cloth, walked backwards, refused to see his nakedness, and covered his nakedness. So the second po point is this honoring brings blessings to the next generation. Dishonor brings curses to next generation. Listen carefully, friends. Here, when Noah blessed and cursed, he didn't curse his son. He cursed the generation to come. When he blessed, he also blessed the generations to come. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Parents, grandparents, older folks, leaders, we are all setting example. And if we set a culture of dishonor, tell you what, the curses is going to go down. We may not be affected, but the curses is going to go down for the next generation, the generations to come. Is this why sometimes some people can never experience breakthrough, cannot experience revival? I pray in 2021, such curses will be broken over our lives in Jesus' name. When we start practicing the culture of honor, it will break curses and blessing will flow into your life. I pray that you and I need to understand every leader has flesh. <laughs> we are not all spirit beings. So when I say flesh means we have our weaknesses. All leaders got weakness one. You know, sometimes we praise some pastors that we watch on internet. Uh, we, uh, we hear on a podcast. Uh, we read their book. But we don't know them personally. But I want to tell you this, including myself. 
all of us have flesh and flesh can get dirty flesh smells it has, needs to be constantly washed with the word of God we are all being transformed so there's no perfect leader my dear friends okay no perfect leaders don't come and tell me I wish my church had that pastor hello do you know that person he also has flesh so the thing that I want to bring across here is this if you cannot respect the office of a person because of his flesh uh, sorry if, if you cannot respect a person because of his flesh at least of uh, respect the office okay at least respect the office it's God who has placed them there if God placed a leader and he is continuously living a, a, a dishonoring life, a sinful life, you know what? God will remove that person. Just as he did in Israel. You remember Saul? Saul was a demon-possessed king. You remember that? He was demon-possessed. God took his spirit away and demon spirits came into him. That's the reason why David had to come and play the harp for him so that his spirit, whenever he was distressed with this evil spirit, would come down by hearing the music that David plays. David knew that Saul was demon-possessed. But, you know, after many years, after becoming his son-in-law and Saul was constantly seeking to kill him, he had an opportunity in a cave to take vengeance upon Saul. His, his uh, men were encouraging him to kill Saul. But you know what? This is what David said. 1 Samuel 24 verse 6. And he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do these things to my master, the Lord's anointed. Listen, Lord's anointed. Emphasis on Lord's, not anointing. We go back, read at the uh, read in your Bible. Anointed is small. Lord is in capital. Okay, to stretch out my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed, small of the Lord. I know that many pastors, to cover their mistakes, they will say, "Touch not the anointed," referring to this scripture. But I want you to see David's attitude was similar to. The attitude of Sham and Japheth. Father was naked. They didn't make fun of it. There was a lot of flesh being revealed. They didn't make fun of it. But instead, they refused to look at the nakedness and went and covered. That's what we need to do. Call one another. And this is exactly what David, uh, David was doing. He was saying such a thing to a demon-possessed man. The emphasis is Lord. The Lord is the one who chose them. The Lord is the one who is going to remove them. Okay? Does that mean... Now listen. Does that mean the pastor can do any sin and get away with it in the church? He sleep around with people. Leaders steal money uh, and just get away with it because we say touch not the anointed. No, that's not what the scripture says. In the New Testament... Uh, in the in the teachings of Paul to Timothy, uh, as he uh, oversees the churches, especially in Ephesus, uh, Paul says this in First Timothy chapter five, verse seventeen: Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. Okay. So, those who teach, labor in the word and doctrine, they need to be given double honor. But, later on in verse 19 and 20, this is what he says to uh, leaders who are not living up uh, to the call of God and are living in sinful lives. This is what he says. Do not receive an accusation. Okay, listen. Someone accuse your leader, do not receive an accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses. Those who are sinning, okay, listen, referring to the leader. Those who are sinning, rebuke in the presence of all that the rest also may 
fear. Okay? You got to give double honor to your pastors and elders. But he also says if they are, if they have strong evidence that they are sinning, they need to be rebuked in the presence of all. So that other leaders, aspiring leaders, will not do likewise. So leaders, we cannot go around saying touch not the anointed. But now listen very carefully. I don't want to just stop here halfway. He says this, this job of rebuking the leader, this job of putting the leader who is sinning in place, is the job of other leaders, not congregation. Why do I say that? Because he's writing to Timothy, who is the leader over the church in Ephesus. It is he who is supposed to do that, not the congregation. Remember, commands bring about dishonor, wrong commands I mean, brings about dishonor and dishonor brings disbelief and dishonor also brings curses. And so, leave such thing to leadership to handle. If a pastor or an elder is sinning, it is not the job of the congregation to go and rebuke and do things. It is the responsibility of leaders to take that sinning leader to task. And so the word of God has everything. There is order in the church. There is honor in the church. When things are done according to God's way, the church will always prosper. The church will always extend the kingdom of God. When he knows how to honor God, honor God's word and honor God's servant. Amen. And so my dear friends, uh, we also need to know, leaders, we cannot hide things for too long. Yeah? Uh, the Bible says, Jesus said, the tree is known by its fruit. So we, we as leaders also need to honor God and live in an honorable way. Okay? Uh, in Proverbs 9, uh, Proverbs 10, 9, it says this, He who walks with integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will become known. And uh, again, Jesus said in Matthew 12, uh, 36, He says, But I say to you that for every idle word man may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. So be very careful what we speak, how we speak, because he says every idle word. Man, God keeps a score. And I'm scared because I've used a lot of idle words. And believe me, when I read this, I repented. Okay? Do I still sometimes say some idle words? Yes. Be honest to you. And the moment the Holy Spirit convicts me, I say, Lord, please forgive me. I've done it again. Help me not to speak such things. So be very careful of how you speak so that it will not create a culture of dishonor. And in closing, the third one is this. This is the story of Miriam and Aaron who are opposing Moses, the younger brother. Okay? Miriam and Aaron are all older than Moses, much, much older than Moses, because we know the story when B Moses was a baby and she, he was put in the basket and uh, uh, you know, sent, sent forth in the river Nile, it, it was Miriam who did it. She was quite, uh, I mean, she was much more older than Moses uh, by age. But there comes a situation, that something happens, okay? Uh, it's a long passage, 16 verses, but I think it's important for me to read for you because sometimes dishonor starts in, in the family, <laughs> okay? Sometimes dishonor starts in the family, our very own family members, wives don't honor husband. You know, if, you, if the, wife, the wife of the pastor doesn't respect the husband and the way she speaks in church, it can create a lot of disrespect in the midst of the congregation because if the wife is talking like that. If the children are behaving in a dishonorable way, it, it brings disres disrepute to the pastor. And so, sometimes <laughs> dishonor comes from family. And so, this is what happened. Verse 1, Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses. Again, it's the mouth, friends. Because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. See, his wife died. 
and he took another wife, and she was Ethiopian. And Ethiopians are dark. There's some racist issues happening in Moses' family. <laughs> Black life matters. They probably they never heard of that. And for he had married an Ethiopian woman. So they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Listen carefully. What they were talking between themselves, Aaron and Miriam, the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron and Miriam, come out, you three, to the tabernacle of meeting. Wow, this is like father, when he finds out something about his children doing naughty, he says, all three of you, come. Okay, so they were called out to the tent of meeting. So the three came out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. The three came out and then he called just these two. And they both ran forward. Then he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face, even plainly, and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Listen, he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? God tells these two siblings. He said, if there is a prophet, I speak to them through vision, I speak to them through dreams. But this prophet Moses, I speak to him face to face. Hello? And you dare speak against him? Well, I like the way God defending Moses here, okay? Uh, I, I, I know the pastors right now who are listening to me saying, I wish God will defend me like this. And so the anger of the Lord was aroused against them and he departed. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous, as white as snow. Then Aaron, ah, he's a smart guy. You see, when the sister suddenly got leprosy, he turned toward Miriam and there she was a leper. So Aaron said to Moses, Oh my Lord! <laughs> he's calling his younger brother. Oh my Lord! Please do not lay this sin on us in which we have done foolishly, in which we have sinned, please do not let her be as one dead whose flesh is half consumed and when he comes out of his mother's womb. So Moses cried out to the Lord saying, Please heal her, O Lord, O God, I pray. Then the Lord said to Moses, If her father had, had but spit in her face, would she not be shamed seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days, and afterward she may be received again. So Miriam was shut out of the camp seven days, and the people did not journey till Miriam was brought in again. Listen very carefully. Eh? The people did not journey. The people did not progress. They were stagnant in the same place until Miriam was brought in again. And afterward, the people moved from Hezroth and camped in the wilderness of Paran. The third thing is this, friends. Dishonor doesn't see age or position. Okay? Dishonor doesn't see age or position. It can come to anybody. It can come to anybody. Yeah? And in this case, one family member also dis uh, dishonor one another. Yeah? And the things that I want to highlight in this particular passage is this. God hears dishonor. Wow. What are the areas of dishonor in your life? God is hearing it. He is not deaf. He can hear it. Be very careful. There needs to be fear of God in our lives if we want to see God's presence in our lives, in our church. 
God can hear this honor. Second thing is this. When there's dishonor, God calls to discipline. <laughs> when there's dishonor, He calls them to discipline. Third thing, when there's dishonor, if someone has dishonored you, my dear friends, listen, just like Moses, you don't have to defend yourself. In this case, Moses was not even complaining to God. God, they dishonor me. He didn't come to God and say, God, take revenge. He didn't even say anything. It is God who hurt them and it's God who disciplined them. And so Moses didn't have to defend himself. God defends him. So I want to say this to every one of us here and especially to pastors. I know I've been a pastor for 30 years. Believe me, I have seen a lot of dishonor in my life. <coughs> but I want to say this to you. God defends. I have stories that I can tell you what has happened to people who have dishonored me. Their whole family has been destroyed. I don't pray for it. I don't ask God to do it. You know, I just forgave them and say, Lord, please, please spare them. But when I look, at, look back, I see the entire family is destroyed. Doesn't bring pleasure to my heart. But that's what happens when people don't want to repent. When they have dishonored and they don't want to repent, God disciplines. Just as He disciplined Miriam. And so dear friends, you don't need to go and defend yourself. God will defend you. Dishonor is like leprosy. Now I don't know, Malaysians know about leprosy or not, but I lived in Nepal for seven years and I've seen a lot of leprosy. I've, we were part of a leprosy organization. And one of the things you will know about leprosy is that they will lose feeling at the end and the nerves will lose feeling and that's how they lose their limbs because they don't feel they sometimes get burned they can even get chopped off and they don't feel okay and so where there is dishonor there's no more feeling we cannot feel the presence of god we got no feelings for people and how they feel because we are so dishonoring. All we can think about is ourselves. Okay? So dishonor, you will lose feeling. But you know what? The most, most sad thing is this. Miriam and Aaron dishonored Moses. But the entire Israelite community couldn't move. Listen carefully, church. Leaders, elders, whoever you are, when there is dishonor, you stop a whole church from moving forward. Okay? Even our nation cannot move forward until we have honor for the leadership. You know, the people out who do not know Christ also talk badly about politicians. Christians also talk badly about politicians. So what's the difference? The Bible didn't ask us to talk, make comments. Remember? The Bible doesn't teach that. But you know what the Bible teach? Pray for them. Pray for people in authority. That's what Paul says. We know that everybody has flesh. If Christians themselves behave in a bad way, how much more people who do not know Christ? What do you expect of them? And so, pray for them and not make comments. And this is what I want to pass on to the church this new year. Three things. I pray that culture of honor will come into your church. The first thing why we need to have culture of honor is because honor leads to belief. Dishonor leads to unbelief. Second thing, honor brings blessing to the next generation and dishonor brings curses to the next generation. And the third thing is this, is honor doesn't see age or position. So dear church, let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray today 
for those who are in the congregation and those who are watching at home. I pray today, Lord, you will speak wherever they are, wherever they are right now. Just as I am praying for you, the Holy Spirit puts this in my heart. You know, a lot of us are now very comfortable worshipping God from home. We are getting very, very comfortable. We enjoy this. We don't want to come back physical service. We give a lot of excuses. But what is the attitude when you worship God at home? How are you dressed? Is there honour? How are you sitting? Is there honour for God? How are you worshipping God? Are you just watching it like some uh, movie? You're on the service, but you're doing other things? Is there honour for God as you worship Him from home? I don't know why the Holy Spirit just placed this upon my heart in the midst of the prayer. You're not going to move anywhere until there is honour. Father, I pray right now, in Jesus' name, touch these folks. Bring about change and transformation so that, Lord, that the church can move. I pray for a culture of honour in this church. Break the curse that comes with this honour because, Lord, it goes into the next generation and we don't want to see the next generation be cursed because of this honour. So, Father, I pray, Come now and bring a change. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor, for allowing me to bring the word. And once again, may there be a culture of honor in your church. Happy New Year. God bless you. Shall we just stand to our feet as we sing this song? This is my desire to honour you. Let's make this song indeed a prayer unto the Lord that we will truly honour Him. I do not know about you, but the message has spoken to me personally as well. And I pray that as a church, we'll be challenged to inculcate a culture of honour starting from our own lives, in our own families, within the church and outside the church too. As we sing this song, mean it from your heart. To honor you
Church, I believe this is a very important message that we need to take heed of. This sermon that Pastor Palin has preached it's not something I've asked him to preach on. I did not give him this topic. But I believe this is what the word that the Lord wants to speak to us. And I believe it ties in very well with our Oasis SIB culture. Sometimes I see, even within our own church, we are not acknowledging one another. We are not greeting each other. We do not know how to say thank you. We do not know how to say sorry. We come late for services. We take things for granted. And I myself have to say that I've been guilty of saying words that are negative. And I want us individually and as a church to come before the Lord in humility to repent where we have been dishonouring to God and to God's people. I want to pray first and foremost for parents and for leaders. Whether you are on site or you are at home right now, if you are a parent, you are a leader in particular. If you have been passing on a culture of dishonour through your comments, through your words, through your attitudes, through your actions, I want you to just come humbly before the Lord and seek for His forgiveness and begin to ask the Lord to change you so that you will be able to live an example, a legacy of honour. So for those of you who are parents, grandparents, leaders, make that your prayer unto the Lord. Because this honouring brings unbelief, brings curses. But when we are able to change that, inculcate a culture of honour, it unleashes the blessings of the Lord. It brings about belief. It changes the entire spiritual atmosphere. So I just want to pray for us, including myself. So if you are a parent, a grandparent, a leader, just pray this prayer and allow God to just do that work to change us. Just lift your hands to the Lord right now. Ever Father Almighty God, Lord, on behalf of all the parents, all the leaders of this church, God, Lord, we, re we come before you in humility. We repent before you. Lord, for the ways we have dishonoured you, O God. Lord, we repent before you, O God for the commands, the words, the actions, the attitudes that we have adopted and the way we have influenced others, O oh God, to dishonour one another. Lord, we repent before you. Lord, cleanse us, change us from the inside out. And Lord, we thank you for your word that you have spoken to us, O oh God. Help us, Father, to take heed of your word and to honour you, Lord. Oh, yes. From the inside out, O oh God. From the way we live, from the way, Lord, we speak to one another. Lord, we want to pray for you to change us so that we will be able Lord, to create this culture of honour, Lord, that will bring honour to you, O oh God. And Lord, when we do that, we know, oh God, that you will bring about faith, belief, blessings, O oh God. Oh, Father, we just pray that you cleanse us, Father. Lord, I want to pray for every parent and grandparent. Lord, help them, O oh God, to teach their children, their grandchildren, the ways of the Lord, O oh God. Oh, to speak, to greet, to acknowledge, to know how to inculcate a positive, honouring culture, starting from their own families and, Lord, towards outsiders, towards church members, towards people around, O oh God. Lord, we pray, Father, you help us, Father. Today, you have spoken to us. So help us not just to be hearers of your word, but doers of your word as well. And for leaders within this church, O oh God, Help us to, O oh God, Lord, to set a positive example, O oh God, and to live, O oh God, oh, a spiritual legacy 
a heritage, oh God, for the generations to come, oh God. Lord, we thank you, Father. Lord, when we are able to do that, oh God, Lord, you release blessings not only upon ourselves or our generation, for the generations to come, oh God. So Lord, we pray, turn this around. Help us, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Do that work in us. Cleanse us and change us. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And for this, the rest of us too, I believe what Pastor Palan spoke on towards the last part is so important. Many of us have been online, joining online services for almost one year now, perhaps. How is your attitude when you, all, when, when you come before the Lord in an online service? Do you just click on and then sit back and relax? Just watch it as though you are watching a movie? Are you coming before the Lord with reverence and awe? Treating it as though you are even in the sanctuary of God? You know, the church can be the church and the sanctuary in the sanctuary or the church on the sofa. Are you just taking that as a church on the sofa? Just re- sit back and relax on your bed and just click on. And then when you finish the sermon, you don't want to continue anymore. You just click it off. You just turn it off. How is your attitude? I pray that we will change. We will repent. We prepare ourselves starting from the pre-service prayer all the way to the ministry time. So I'm speaking to all of you who are at home right now. This is not a word of condemnation, but a word of exhortation. Treat the presence of God seriously. Begin to honour the Lord even in your home. Whether it's for cell group, whether it's for refreshing hour, whatever that is, yes, we are now online, but that doesn't mean we can take things lightly. We can take God's presence for granted. And I know many of us, we tend to lay, be laid back when we are at home. Some of you, you may be sleeping late and waking up late. You may miss the service. I want to encourage you to lock in on time. Be punctual. If you can, join us live and not wait until later part. If you really cannot, then when you watch it, when you join that service, make sure that you also prepare your heart and be attentive. Let's inculcate a culture of honour. Let me pray for all of us as a church. Abba Father Almighty God, thank you for speaking to us. Lord, we want to be serious with you, O God. We are living in the last days and we want, O Lord, to mean business with you. So help us, Father. Help us, O God, to come before you with that respect, that reverence, that fear, God. Lord, to honour you with our words, actions and deeds. And Lord, we also pray, Father, even each time we come together, whether it's online or on-site, Lord, help us, Father, to know, O God, to give you our best, O God, because you deserve the highest worship. Thank you, Father. And Lord, we also pray that you give us a heart that is sensitive to the feelings of others. Lord, we will not be having dishonour that we do not feel for others anymore. We just say and do what we want to do, O God. Lord, forgive us. We pray that you grant us a heart of compassion and respect for others, O God. Lord, we pray too, Lord, for the leaders of our country, O God. Forgive us that we have spoken against them. And we pray, Father, help us to pray, to pray and to intercede, O God. Because only you, O God, can change things around, God. So we look to you. We commit this church to you. We commit each one of us and our families to you. Thank you, Father, for speaking to us. Bless, O God each one of us, and also bless Pastor Palan and his ministry, O God. Lord, as we dismiss today, O God, we pray, Father, that you help us to carry your presence home and Lord, to continue to walk with you, O God, with that honour, O God. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Now may the love, the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the comfort and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you this day and evermore. In Jesus' wonderful and precious name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen, Amen. God bless all of you. Have a great week ahead.